Hi Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over the second part of Lesson 4.15, Reviewing the Atom. And we're at the Lewis dot structure. So go ahead and draw the Lewis dot structure for ammonia, which is NH3. So hit the pause button. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one. And so they are going to line up and this electron is going to share it with nitrogen. This electron is going to be shared with nitrogen here and this hydrogen is going to share over here. Now if you notice they just drew a straight line. You can do that. You don't have to draw the two dots in between them. You can just draw a straight line. But this leftover pair that's around nitrogen, that you have to leave as two dots. And if you'd like to hit pause and read their explanation, please do. And here's the next one for you to practice. Draw the Lewis dot structure for molecular oxygen. In other words, O2. Hit the pause button. Each oxygen should have how many valence electrons around it? Six. Okay, and your answer will be like this. You will have a double bond between the oxygens, and each oxygen will have a pair of electrons towards the bottom and a pair towards the top. Um, they show you that these are other ways that they can be drawn out as well. Um, I've rarely seen them like this. That's kind of the worst one. And like this is just when people are hand drawing them. So this is most common and then that structure as well. All right, problem set. And it suggests that you do numbers two and let's do four and let's do six. So go ahead and do the even ones and hit pause and get your answer. All right, so number two, each carbon has four valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one. So we have a nice, easy, single bond happening in all four directions. All right, and for C2H6, again, we're gonna have nice single bonds happening all over the place because each hydrogen can make one bond and there's six total hydrogens. And then of course the carbons are going to bond together in the middle. And for six, nitrogen has five valence electrons. And so since there's only five and they need eight, these three are going to have to form bonds and we'll have a triple bond. Van der Waal forces. Objectives. Identify van der Waal forces, including dipole interactions and dispersion forces. Relate van der Waal forces to the boiling and melting points of substances. Describe hydrogen bonds. Weak forces based on electric charges can bring atoms and molecules together. Weak attractions and repulsions known as van der Waal forces can cause atoms or molecules to attract or repel one another. There are three main types of van der Waal forces. Dipole interactions, dispersion forces, and hydrogen bonds. Dipole interactions occur between polar molecules. The positive partial charge on one polar molecule attracts the negative partial charge on the other polar molecule, pulling the molecules together. Dispersion forces occur because electrons are constantly moving. At any single moment, a neutral atom or molecule may have a negative side and a positive side. These slight charges are transient. That is, they last for a very short time, so a split second. However, even that small amount of time can be enough for the atoms or molecules to attract or repel one another slightly. The bigger the atom or molecule is, the more electrons that are in motion and the larger the dispersion forces between them. So remember that one was like the race car. The fact that the electrons are going around and around and they all might be on this side, creating a negative end and a positive end and then the domino effect. The third type of van der Waal force, the hydrogen bond, occurs between molecules that contain hydrogen atoms covalently bonded to highly electronegative atoms such as oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. A relatively strong electrostatic attraction forms between a hydrogen bond bound to an oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine atom and an oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine atom on another molecule. This attraction is known as hydrogen bond. Van der Waal forces can affect the boiling and melting points of a substance, in general, the stronger the van der Waals attractions between atoms or molecules in a substance are, the higher the substance's melting and boiling points because it takes more energy to break them apart. So it's like it has an extra layer of glue. Describe the van der Waal forces in a substance. Sulfur dichloride, a cherry red liquid, is made up of polar molecules. What primary van der Waal force pulls groups of these molecules together? 
So hit pause, and your answer is, since it's a polar molecules, the dipole interactions are going to pull them together. Dispersion forces may also affect the sulfur chloride molecules, sorry, sulfur dichloride molecules. Hydrogen bonds will not exist because, well, there's no hydrogen. Van der Waal forces. Van der Waal forces are electrostatic attractions and repulsions. That is, they arise because similar electric charges repel, so positive and positive repel, negative and negative repel, and opposite electric charges attract. Only polar molecules can produce dipole interactions. Dispersion forces occur when the cloud of electrons that surrounds an atom momentarily migrates to one side of an atom, giving that side a temporary negative charge, and therefore the other side a temporary positive charge. Hydrogen bonds occur between hydrogen atoms and atoms of highly electric negative elements, oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. Hydrogen bonds are not bonds between two hydrogen atoms, right? They are intermolecular forces. They're between molecules. Predict the effects of van der Waal forces on boiling point. Tip, atoms with more electrons typically have higher boiling points because more electrons can participate in dispersion forces. Helium and neon are both noble gases that can be condensed into liquids, so by pressurizing. Use what you know about van der Waal forces to predict which of these substances probably has a higher boiling point. And just as a reminder, even though we always think of helium and neon not as reacting, we're not talking about reacting, we're talking about the boiling point, and the electrons are still moving, even though it has a full outer shell, so you still have the dispersion forces. Um, so the only van der Waal forces are going to be the dispersion, and we look, helium has two electrons, but neon has ten, so neon has more that can be at one side, so it's going to have a higher boiling point. Go ahead and hit pause and read the rest of this section. Question one, in which of these substances would dipole interaction be the strongest? Go ahead and hit pause and get your answer. Well, in order to have dipole, you need two poles. We drew CH4, it's the same everywhere. H2 and O2, well, they're both made of the same element, so they're going to equally attract electrons. The only polar molecule is C. Number three, phosphorus, trichloride, and ammonia are both polar molecules. Identify a type of van der Waals force that exists in ammonia, but not in phosphorus chloride. Explain your answer. Hit pause. Answer is hydrogen bonding. You have to have hydrogens in order to have hydrogen bonding.